Adding a new member to your reptile family can be extremely exciting, but quarantining your animals is something that's very important and not talked about nearly enough. So today, we're gonna to talk about why you should quarantine your animals, how long, and the proper way to do it. I'm Adam, this is Diglett, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. is an African fat tail gecko, just a normal African fat tail gecko. She's a juvenile, she's not quite full grown yet. And before I bring her into my reptile room, we need to make sure that she's completely healthy. And although I did check at the reptile expo I picked her up at, I've gotta make sure that Diglett isn't... So I check things like to make sure her eyes are clear, make sure her mouth is clear, she's up to weight, her tail is fat, things like that. Now, these are always important things to do, but just because you've done your due diligence at the reptile store, the expo, the breeder, whatever, doesn't mean there's not something that you don't know about and possibly the person that you got her from doesn't know about either. Basically, quarantining your new reptile is just a safeguard to make sure that just in case, there's nothing that's gonna spread from the new reptile to your entire established collection. So, now you know why, how do you do it? Quarantining really isn't rocket science. It's pretty simple stuff. You're basically keeping your new reptile away from all the old reptiles. It's very simple, very straightforward. They're just a couple do's and don'ts, such as don't do the quarantine 10 feet away from your the, the rest of your collection. <laughs> That's not what I mean by quarantine. What I mean by quarantine is in a different room and generally in a different airspace is what you want to do. If you know, you've got a downstairs area that is completely open, you probably wanna make sure that there's a couple doors in between your new reptile and the rest of your collection just to be super safe. Now I've done quarantines a few ways. If you watched this video here about how to get rid of snake mites, you'll notice that because I did a quarantine and I did it far away from the rest of my collection, I didn't have the snakes that came to me that had mites spread the mites to the rest of my collection. So for that, I just did it upstairs in my kitchen, which I mean, maybe not the most sanitary thing, but away from all the food, just it's a big kitchen, okay? I put them on top of a drawer, basically, and I put heat tape on the bottom, which is how I do it most of the time, because although these aren't the regular enclosures or long time enclosures, these animals might be there for a month, two months, three months, six months. We're gonna get to that in a second. So you wanna make sure that they are being taken care of to the best of your ability. They've got an adequate space to move around so you can make sure you notice that if there's anything wrong in the way that they're moving and make sure that they're moving just fine. Thank you very much for playing along, Diglett. This is a perfect time for you to squirm around and make sure that they've got the right temperatures, right humidity, because if they don't have that, then when you observe your animal, you won't know if they're being normal because Animals are only normal if they're happy. So generally when I get snakes, especially snakes that are prone to getting mites, like any snake can get mites, don't get me wrong, but keeled scale animals uh, like hognose snakes are less likely to have mites, say like a ball python. Uh, the only animals I've ever really had that have had mites are ball pythons and boa constrictors. So what I do is I, when I bring them home, I, I put them upstairs. My reptile room is downstairs. So upstairs as far away as I can possibly get from the reptile room. So I just set up some heat tape. I tape it down sometimes. I put a container that's just kind of set up very minimalistically. And I'll show you diglets here. It's just paper towel as substrate, which is great, especially for snakes because if they do have mites, then you're gonna be able to see them. Mites are these black little specks they hide under the scales of your animal uh, and they basically suck the blood of your animal. So they spread very easily and because they're black and paper towel is white, it's very simple to see anything that comes off of your animal that might be a darker color. Plus, it's very easy to clean. And the idea is you wanna be very sanitary with these new animals because if they do have something wrong, you wanna catch it. So don't clutter up the enclosures. Diglets, you're gonna see basically a water bowl, which you need. This one's a little bit empty because I moved it around and it kind of spilled, but fill the water bowl up, give them a food bowl, right? Make sure that they're eating properly. This is very important. Vary up the diet, see what they like to eat and what they don't. Not just for a quarantine thing, because every individual is just that an individual and you wanna make sure that they're eating for you. 
and then give them a, a couple of hides. So what you don't see in here, I've got paper towel rolls is what I use for the cool side of the hide. And for the warm side, that's where I have another paper towel for a dry hide. And because African fat tail is like a little bit higher humidity, I make sure that they have a humid hide, which you should do for leopard geckos also, which they're similar to kind of, but I make sure that they've got a humid hide. So you're giving them everything they would need in a real enclosure or their actual enclosure that they're gonna have permanently just forego the fake plants and stuff like that. It's just extra stuff you're gonna have to either sterilize or sanitize or throw out if for whatever reason this animal becomes or turns out not to be completely healthy. And then of course the only real way to make sure that the temperatures and humidity are proper is with a really good hydrometer and thermometer. And I like these ones that show the minimum and the maximum uh, for all time in the last 24 hours. So, you know, you're at work all day or you're sleeping at night and you wanna see like how cold did it get over the 24 hours, how warm did it spike at, and same with the humidity. Well, these are great for that and I think it was like 26 bucks for two of them, Canadian on Amazon. Uh, so they're relatively, affordable really easy so you make sure those things are in the enclosure and that's basically it feed like normal water like normal and observe your animal because that's how you know if they're healthy or not are they acting normal and i mean if you don't have a ton of experience this might be a little bit harder to tell but in general you'll know if an animal looks sick or isn't acting right you know and you'll see here that diglet is just kind of walking from hand to hand now i don't have a tremendous amount of experience with african fat tails but to me she looks like she's acting very normal. And the last few days since I got her on Sunday, uh, the Sunday before last, she's been acting very normal. So I'm comfortable with that. And also make sure that you're looking at eating behavior and pooping behavior. Now, kind of gross to talk about, but make sure that their poops don't look runny. They look normal. If you're not sure exactly what the poops are supposed to look like, because it's a new species to you or an animal you're not familiar with. You can always send pictures back to the breeder, post pictures on Facebook groups if you're brave enough to ask for advice. Um, and of course, just use a little bit of common sense. Now, I know with African fat tail, poops are supposed to look like, this is what they're supposed to look like. I'm pretty confident Diglett's very healthy so far. If you like this video so far or find it at all useful, bam, hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. You're good looking. Now, the only controversial topic with uh, quarantining, in my opinion, is how long should they remain in quarantine? Now, you'll never hear someone say less than a month, usually. That's what I would recommend at very bare minimum, a month. Because although they might not show signs today or tomorrow, I mean, after a month, if they're not showing signs, maybe they're okay. But there are other maladies and funguses and things like that that even though they don't show signs of, they may have. Uh, and it could take up to six months or you know up to a year for certain things to actually show up now I'm not gonna say that you should keep uh, your animal in quarantine for a year. That's a little bit silly I always suggest three months. I think that's about uh, a good safe amount of time Sometimes I'll go less um, with snakes generally if it's mites that you're worried about although you should always be worried about other things too mites will show themselves immediately. I mean, as, even if they've gotten rid of the mite uh, infection, the mites themselves, the eggs generally are going to hatch within about three weeks. So if you have them in quarantine for four or five weeks and you see no mites, that snake generally, in my opinion, does not have mites. And then when you're ready for the animal to come out of quarantine, the important thing is make sure that their setup is ready and it's right. And don't if, if the setup's gonna be a little bit different and uh, quarantine, that's okay. And make sure that the humidity and the temperature, which should have been right the entire time in quarantine, is correct and matching and there's not a huge fluctuation. Because although temperature and humidity can have, you know, a little bit of a range, right? For example, for uh, an African fat tail, a lot of people will say between 30 and 60. I like to go between 50 and 60% humidity for African fat tails. If it's 45 in the enclosure that you use for the three month quarantine, and then it's, you know, 65 in the regular enclosure, it's a little bit of a swing. So just try to get it as close together as it possibly can be. And just a couple notes. Of course, if you're quarantining the animal, the entire idea is that there's no contact between the animal or anything that's on the animal and the rest of the collection. So snake hooks, tongs, things like that, deal with your whole collection first. If you feed, you know, once a week, if it's a snake, for example, and you clean every three days, make sure that you clean and feed your entire collection first, then come into the quarantine area and take care of the animal last. And then immediately 
sanitize or throw out everything you were using because you're a human. And I've seen it happen before where ah, I'm gonna use these tongs, I'll put them over here, and then all of a sudden you take them into the room. Oh, I forgot to sterilize them. And I've never seen it actually be an issue, but if that animal was sick, the animal that's in quarantine, then you're putting your entire collection at risk and it's unnecessary. So just be mindful, make sure that if you're using the same instruments, you know, snake hooks, for example, um, even spray bottles, I, I always wash them off. I just kind of like sanitize the actual spray bottles just to be completely safe and never kind of cross contaminate, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. And that goes for you too. Wash your hands. I mean, I'm holding her now. I've had her on my shirt. You guys saw that. So I'm not going to go into that other room, right? And I know I'll keep pointing over there just so you guys know the reptile room and this room are far enough away that there's three doors separating, like nothing's getting through the walls. <laughs> it's far enough away. I'll change my shirt, I'll wash my hands thoroughly and my arms and anything that this animal has touched before I go into the other room because, I mean, you look you look pretty healthy, but I don't, I don't know. And just one last thing, Diglett here, I'm holding her, I'm handling her, and a lot of people will say that you should not handle an animal as much as possible during quarantine. I actually don't think that, I think the opposite. I think that you should, you know, get it used to handling it. This is a new animal to your collection. As long as you're using that tip of washing your hands first and not touching the new animal and then touching the old animals, you wanna make sure that it's acting healthy. And a good way to do that is to see how it reacts to being held, being handled, especially if it's an animal like an African fat tail or a, you know, a ball python or a hognose snake or something that's used to being handled. Now, if your emerald tree boa isn't liking being handled, it doesn't mean it's sick. It means that it's an emerald tree boa. You just kinda gotta use a little bit of common sense there. And that's it. That's how you do a proper quarantine. Did I forget something? Did I add something you don't agree with? Put in the comments section below. We're all here to learn together. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy who talks to a camera about reptiles in his basement. But because of you guys, I chose this topic. Every week, I choose the topic out of the comments section below. So what should I talk about next week? And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you yeah. on Thursday. Raising the Tobago's, we growing like fresh tomatoes. Them boys on fire, two fuego. We pass it round, hot potato. Everything is new wavo. I'm with my sweetie like Quavo. Need my cheese, need that queso. Need my bread, need that bankroll. Wake up, yes, Lord, I'm thankful. Another day on my schedule. Steady blocking the devil. I tell her, hey.